This is a live example of a Wix Store's product page. At the top, you see the regular layout that Wix offers via its settings. You can upload images, add a description, and even add some specs. If you notice, here on this Wix Store's product page, we've actually added videos that link out to YouTube. It also has audio files and custom specs to allow the owner to upload an icon, a title, a short description, or even downloadable files. Now for the Wix Store's product page, you can add images, GIFs, or GIFs, and uploaded videos. Unfortunately, there are some limitations. For the videos, they must be 50 MB size or smaller. You have to physically upload them onto the product, which means you cannot use videos that are already uploaded to YouTube or Vimeo. You need the actual video file. There is also no way to upload any other custom elements like audio files or hyperlinks. So I'm going to show you how to customize your Wix Store's product page. Let's get to know what's going on on this page. The standard Wix Store's product page is made up of one large widget, and this widget is not codable. The widget and the text and everything inside of it can only be managed via the settings. So if it's in the settings, you can change it. If it's not, then you're out of luck. Now, everything above the widget and underneath can be coded. This is an example of an old review section that we used in a previous tutorial. I'm going to remove this section, remove the old data sets, and start from scratch. Let's begin by creating a database. Make sure that dev mode is turned on. Then we're going to go over to the database section and we're going to add a new content collection. Let's label it Extra Info. Now you can change the collection ID to anything you want or leave it as is. Once you hit Enter and it generates the database for you, we're able to add different fields. Let's keep the title field Let's add some more. We're going to do info type, and this will be a text field. We want to know what type of information we're uploading. Is it audio, video, just regular information, etc.? I'm going to add an icon field. This will be an image. maybe a description field, and that will be text. Let's add a doc file. Be sure to select document, and then save. Video URL. We need to make sure we select URL, not video for the file type. Let's do audio file, just in case. Maybe some of you will need it later. And now, for the most important field, let's do a product reference field. For the field type, we're going to look for reference. Then, we're going to look for an existing database that is actually our Wix Store's products, which is this one, products. Let me start by adding the first example. I'm going to select a product, and I'm going to add a URL for my YouTube video. Then I can add another row. And you just keep going down. Now for info type, I'm going to type in the word video. 
That way, my code knows I'm going to look for videos to appear on the page. Now, you don't have to finish adding all of your database info right now. We're just adding some examples so we can create some code and test it out. The information that we have here is still in a sandbox. We haven't published it. It hasn't been made live. There's nothing that exists on our live website just yet. All right, let's get back to the product page. We're going to scroll all the way to the very bottom, and after the product widget ends, we're going to add a strip just to keep all of the extra elements contained in one section. I've added my strip. Now I'm going to add a repeater. We want to be able to repeat as many items as needed that are saved in the database. So if we have one video link, I want one video to appear. If I have two, three, five, ten, etc., I want those to appear. You can design and style this however you like. For now, we're going to keep it simple. When we add the repeater to the page, we need to make sure it physically attaches to the strip that we're working with. Just for my reference, I'm going to add a text so I know that this will be my video section. Now I'm going to add a video element. I will attach it to the repeater item. Now we're ready to connect it to the database. Let's go to the Content Manager section and add a data set to the page. In the settings, we're going to connect this data set to our extra info database. We're going to call this one Videos. Now let's increase the limit to 20. There is a section for filters, but we're not going to use this area. We're actually going to code the filters so that way we can check to see what product is visible on the page and then filter the videos based on that product. Also going to make sure that we run the code every time the page changes. Now that we have our data set for videos, we're going to connect a repeater. We're going to select the video connection. You don't need to connect the video title if you don't want to, but we do need to connect the video source. So go ahead and select video URL for the source. Right now, all of the video links that were added into the database are showing because we have no filter here. This strip will be renamed video strip. And we want to collapse it on load. I'm also going to rename the data set to video data set. Now here's an example of some code that I've already created for you. You can copy and paste it from the tutorial page. Let's go over what this stuff means. At the very top, it's going to say when the page is ready, we're going to take the current product and we're going to get the ID of that product. That ID is actually the one that is being used inside of the product reference field that we selected in our database. Then I created three different variables for the three possible file types that we would manually label in the database. Now that we have the three variable types for the types of files that we're going to be looking for, we need to make sure that those strips exist. So here I created an example of what it would be to have a video strip. You would basically just create another strip for audio, and then you change out the repeater element to an audio one. You would create another data set, and we can duplicate the one that we already have. We'll change the settings, label it audio, and change the ID to audio dataset. 
I can duplicate a third one for info. And info data set. Extra details. And then you can add extra text. I'm going to add a small image. just to give you an idea of what it would be like to upload an icon. And I'm going to add a download button. just in case you uploaded a document and you want people to download it. I'm going to call this download and I'm going to hide it. I'm going to make sure the strip is selected so I can change the ID to info strip and I'm going to collapse it again. Our three sections are ready. So for each section, I will be checking to see if there's that specific type of file. So if there's a section that you don't need, just highlight and delete that piece of the code. The piece of the code starts with Wix static query and ends there. So first we're going to check to see if this product has any video files. We are going to be querying our database. So we need to make sure that our database name is correct. Going to click databases, go to edit settings, and copy the collection ID. And this is the one that we're going to enter here. Remember, for every Wix data query, we have to make sure that the database name is the same. go down the code and replace all of those. In our query, we're going to be checking for the product reference. This comes from our database field. You just want to double check and the properties to make sure that you're using the correct key. Product reference is my key. All of mine are correct. For the next one, for the type, we want to make sure that we have the correct field key as well. So in our database, we called it info type. Info type with a capital T is my field key, and that is correct as well. For the query, I'm going to add ID, and for the type, I'm going to add my variable. Right here, I set my three variables to be video, audio, and info, with the corresponding text for each one. This text must match exactly what you type into the database. So for example, under info type, if you type in videos and then video, video, this one will not come out in the query, only the ones that were typed in exactly the same. From here, we need to make sure that the correct data set has the filter. So video data set is what we called it, and we're going to set the filter for the same exact variables as the top. 
and then we're going to tell the video strip to expand. So make sure to update those variables as needed. This is for the first query, then for the next one. Info type audio, audio strip, audio data set, you tell it to expand or collapse. And then again, or the other info. I called mine info strip, info strip. And then for this one, it has an extra piece of code that is not in the other ones. This is for the button. Now we did label it download button, passively. Let's double check. No, just download. So here, we want to make sure that our button ID matches. And for this repeater, it is actually repeater number three. So I'm going to change that here, repeater three. Now what it's going to do is going to check for a file. If it has a file, then I want the button to appear. Otherwise, it'll just stay hidden. So to make sure that we have the right field key for this file, let's go to our database. Check under doc file and get that key and update the code. That's the end of that first run of code, but we are going to run the code again if the page changes. So on change, the code just repeats itself. So make sure you update the variables down here as well. Now that your code is ready, you can save. And you can test it. No strips have expanded because we didn't add any files for the glasses. So let's get back to our shop. We're going to look for the eyes. And there it is. We added two video links. So this strip expanded. Let's go back to the editor and let's check what other product we added links to. The food. For the food, there should be only one video link. Let's look for the food. And voila, one video. That's the whole tutorial for you. Thanks for watching and thanks for being a fan club member and sponsor. I really appreciate you being a subscriber to my channel. Be sure to follow the channel threads to let me know what type of videos you would like to see exclusively for you. Bye.